And what a glorious message tonight. Thank God there's room at the cross for you. You know, John, just as he was introducing that piece, he happened just to mention it. Doesn't matter what kind of a person you are, Jesus can forgive the deepest sin. And he also said that there's none too good to be saved either. No matter how good a person thinks they are, they need to be saved. And friends, that's exactly really what we're going to look at tonight. I want you to turn for a moment or two this evening before we close. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. I feel tonight, if I never said a word in this service, that we've already listened to the Gospel, and we praise God, and we thank Him for that. John, the Lord bless you, and bless you richly. It's been a joy just to listen to your ministry tonight amongst us. But let's read a few verses. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. And we're going to begin in verse 9. Verse 9. We're going to read down through uh, to verse 14. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. And Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote upon his breast, saying, God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Finishing there at the end of verse 14 is always just committing the Lord's word into his hand that his blessing would rest upon it. I don't know about you, but... Whenever I read through Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, I can't help but feel if you tie the whole chapter together, more or less from start to finish, that there's a theme that runs through the entire chapter. And I believe that the theme very much is the theme of prayer and the theme of how to approach God or how to approach the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you may have your Bible open. Let me just throw, throw the outline of that towards you for just a moment or two. And, you know, you can maybe read it at home or think about it at home. But at the very beginning, Jesus speaks a parable about a woman who comes to an unjust judge. And the Bible tells us in that parable that because of her much coming, the judge granted her what she desired or what she needed. Then you come into this section. And in this section, you have two people who come to pray. The parable in the first section is very much to do with the Father and with us coming persistently in prayer before his throne. The second parable that we read together tonight speaks of one who tries to approach the throne and makes a mess of it, and another who does approach the Father and makes a glorious job of it. Then you can move further down the chapter. The next story in the chapter is about them bringing children to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, let me just read you another verse. He says in verse 17, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. There Jesus tells us how we approach God. We come in simple, childlike faith before the throne. The next story in the chapter is the story of the rich ruler. And you know that story, he comes to Christ. Jesus says, sell all that you have, give it to the poor. And he wasn't prepared to give up his wealth, and he went away sorrowful. In other words, to come to the Lord, you must be prepared to leave everything on the altar. You must be prepared to leave everything down before him. And then finally in the chapter, you have the story of the blind beggar. And of course, he cried out to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he received exactly what he needed from him. And that's just a little thought or two in the chapter. You can browse through that. You can think about it yourself. But I believe that Jesus is teaching us very, very much in this chapter about how we can come to God, 
how we can approach God, how we can talk to God, how we can know the reality of God and the blessing of God in our hearts and in our lives. And with that in mind, we're thinking about these two characters in this parable. We're told one is a Pharisee, we're told the other is a publican, and we see how they both make their way to the place of prayer. Friends, I want to say tonight that heaven is going to be a place that will be full of surprises. You've heard the old saying as well as I have, there will be people in heaven that we did not expect to be there. And there will be people not in heaven that we did expect to be there. Because you see tonight, it's not the outward that matters. It's not the show that we can put on. It's not the things that we can do. We'll think about this in just a moment or two. But it's the heart. It's the heart's condition before the Lord God that makes all of the difference as far as his blessing in life and his gift of eternal life as far as eternity is concerned. And so we've got to think about our hearts tonight. God looks upon the heart. Let me say tonight that we see very clearly that good from Scripture, that good works can't save the soul. We think about this often. And if anyone is to be saved, if anyone is to have the gift of eternal life, then it is only to be found in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sinners, praise God. Our brother mentioned it tonight before his final piece. Sinners can be saved. Sinners can be justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God he made peace through the blood of his cross. But let's think for a moment tonight about this Pharisee. Bible tells us here, this Pharisee, he goes up into the place of prayer, into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a publican. Listen to this. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Friends, do you know there's something like 34 words in that prayer, and he mentions himself five times? You see, the first thing I see about this man is here is someone who is completely caught up with himself. Now, he's going to the temple. He's going to the place of prayer. For the Pharisee, that was a must. He's maybe not even in the place of prayer because that's necessarily where he wants to be. But he's in the place of prayer because that's the place that he should be. And so he's in the temple and he begins to pray. You know, I think it's interesting because listen to what Jesus says. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. With himself. What an interesting phrase that is. You see, I like to think that whenever I pray, I pray with the Father. I pray with the Holy Spirit. For those of us who are saved tonight, that's how we like to think that we pray. But here's a man, and he's so caught up with himself that whenever he tries to come into the presence of God, he's not praying with God. He's not praying with his heavenly Father. He's not praying with the Holy Spirit. He's praying only with himself. Do you know why Jesus says that, friends? This man's God was himself. Himself. That's all he was caught up with. He was a Pharisee. He was a law keeper. He was someone who looked down his nose at other people. In fact, he says here, I thank you, I'm not like this publican. What business was it of his, what the publican was like? But here he is, and he esteems. You know, we, we listened to our brother Arthur Williams this morning. And Arthur said, <laughs> in fact, we were joking about it coming in the door tonight. Arthur said that we're to esteem other, each other higher than ourselves. We did that so much coming in the door tonight, nobody knew who wanted to come in the door first. After you, brother. After you, sister. But here's a man, and he was quite the opposite. Because he esteemed himself to be better than everybody else. Listen to what he says again. He says in this verse, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. What does that tell you? Here's a man who's full of pride. 
Pride is the root of every single sin that is in this world. It all started with pride in the heart of Lucifer all that time ago, somewhere back out there in eternity. Pride is the root of every single sin. And here's a man who's full of it. He says, I thank you, Lord, that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even this publican. You know, he looked around him. And he thought he was so good that all he could see in other people were their faults. Friends, listen to me tonight. That's what pride does. You listen to someone who has a proud spirit. And that person will criticize everybody and everything because they think they know it better and they think they can do it better. And it's always evident. Always. Comes from pride in the heart. You listen to the person that gossips. Pride. Pride makes a person talk about other people. And here's a man, perfect example. And he's pumped up, full of it. Lord, I thank you. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not this. I'm not, I'm not even like this publican. Thank you, Lord. And you see, our brother shared tonight before that final piece that there's no one too good to be saved. And you could be sitting in this service tonight and you could be saying, well, you know, that's all and fine, but I look at my life you could be saying, looking at your life, and you could be thinking to yourself, I've never really done anybody any harm. I'm certainly not as bad as such and such a person or as bad as such and such. I've never committed that sin. I've never committed that sin. I want to tell you something tonight. I have a criminal record. Oh, that surprises some of you. Some of you doesn't. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I was convicted a number of years ago, and I have a criminal record tonight. Now, it was something that was very, very small. But as far as this country is concerned, in the eyes of the law, I have a criminal record. I have broken the law. Now, I've never murdered anybody. Not that I know of. <laughs> By the way, I have a sermon, the man that killed his congregation. I'll maybe preach that one to you sometime. But, <laughs> but, you know, I've never done anything like that. But nevertheless, I have a criminal record because of a small thing that happened years ago. And you see, here's what the Bible says. If we keep the whole law, but we offend in one point, we're guilty of all. You see, in the eyes of this country, if I'm applying for anything where you have to put down criminal convictions, I have to put that down because I'm a lawbreaker. End of story. And it doesn't matter whether it was a big string that I broke big law or a small law in the judicial system, I'm a lawbreaker. Listen, dear friend, tonight, in the economy of God, you have broken his law. And I don't care tonight if you've only ever told one lie in your life, you've broken his law. I don't care tonight if you have only cursed once in your whole life, you've broken his law. And I don't care tonight whether you've done all the good things that you can possibly do, but at one time in your life you slipped up and you did something that was sinful and wrong. In the eyes of God, you've broken his law. But worse than that, our brother told us tonight that we're born that way. You see, we don't become sinners because we break his law. But no, friends, listen, we break his law because we're already sinners. It's already in us. Born in sin and shaping in iniquity. But here we see this man in this parable. And he looks at his life. And he's such a great guy. You know, he has done nothing wrong. I thank you, Lord. I'm not like other people. But he was really unique, this person, I can tell you. And you see, as I say, you could be sitting in this service tonight. And you could be thinking, well, you know, do I really need this salvation. Do I really need to be saved? I'm not as bad as this one. I haven't done that. I haven't done the other. Dear one, what I'm trying to say tonight is yes. We have all come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and we all need God's salvation. And so here is this Pharisee. He's in the place of prayer because that's the right place to be. That's the place he should be. You see, he believes in being religious. That's what we do. We try to be religious in order to be acceptable with God. We try to go through religious activities 
in order to, to find some way into God's presence and hopefully some way into God's eternity. And here he is, he believes in being religious. It's a thing to do. The publican, on the other hand, the publican has come to the place of prayer because he wants to find God. What a difference between these two men. He wants to find God. Let me go back to the Pharisee. We'll come to the public in just a moment or two. Let me come back to the Pharisee for just a moment. As I've said, something like 34, maybe 35 words, and five times in that prayer, it's I, 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 I. Let me read it to you just one more time. He stood and he prayed with himself, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Full, full of I. You see, he glories in what he is. I am not like other men. He glories in what he does. I fast twice a week. He glories in what he gives. I give tithes. He glories in every single thing that's about him. And he can't see anything bad in anything that he has done. Friends, he's a man who is completely and utterly blind to his own condition. Even before I was saved, I knew fine well in my heart what I had done. And if you have any sense tonight, so do you. Because we know what's right, the conscience within us. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. And we know whenever we have done something that is wrong. But here's a man, and he was so caught up in himself and in his religion that he was completely blind to the defects and to the sin that was in his own heart and in his own life. Very quickly, let's think for a moment about the publican. How different he was. How different. You see, the publican, he is so conscious of his own sinfulness that the Bible tells us that he stands afar off. He doesn't even come close to where others are. The publican, unlike the Pharisee, he doesn't see the faults in other people, but he's trying to come before God, and he only sees the faults in his own life. He is the sinner. In fact, he's a self-condemned man in his own eyes. It says the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, here's a man, he smites his breast because he realizes that the source of his guilt is deeper than the words that he has said, much deeper than the actions that he has performed. He realizes that there's something deep down within him. He smites his breast in despair. Lord, in other words, there's something deep down in me that does this. Oh God, be merciful. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Friends, thank God tonight for his mercy. Thank God for his mercy. Pass me not. Oh, what a lovely hymn. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Here's a humble cry. Lord, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I want to tell you tonight, the prayer. If you're thinking about prayer, and you're maybe here tonight, maybe you don't know the Lord as your own personal Savior, but you have times in life whenever you pray anyhow. Can I tell you tonight, if you're, Involved in prayer, or if you're thinking about prayer, friends, listen to me. This is where prayer starts at. God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. And can I tell you tonight, if your prayer has not begun at that place, doesn't matter what else you say, you're just like the Pharisee. Because unless you recognize and unless you confess your need before the Lord Jesus Christ, we need his mercy. And unless you recognize and you confess that before him, the Pharisee, you're just like him. You're too good. You don't need what only Jesus can give. You don't need what God says you need. You're full of pride. And you know better than what God says in his word. But here's a man. God, be merciful 
to me, a sinner. He stands before God, a self-condemned man. He's so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed with the sh- his shame that he doesn't even look heavenward. And he smites his breast. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Friends, that's why we have a gospel message to proclaim tonight. See, thank God tonight, he can be merciful. Although we have sinned, although we have fallen short of his glory, thank God tonight, mercy is available. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, God's lovely son, came into this world and took your sin, took my sin. Our brother sang about that tonight also. He took our sin to that cross. He nailed it to that cross so that you and I could be forgiven, so that you and I could receive the mercy of God. So whenever you and I come earnestly before God, like this publican, God, forgive me. God, be merciful to me. Praise God tonight there's mercy with the Lord because Jesus Christ has paid in full with his own precious blood that we might be forgiven. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, thank God. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you. Hallelujah. He will save you now. Friends, there's mercy with the Lord tonight. Because that has been purchased. And it cost him his son. And it cost his son his life. It cost his son his very life's blood. Shed, poured out for you and for me in love. So that we could know the mercy of God whenever we call upon him. God be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, the Pharisee prayed with himself. But friend, listen to me. The publican touched God with his prayer. God be merciful. Listen to how Jesus sums it up. He says, I tell you, this man, speaking about the publican, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Justified simply means right before God. He came as a sinner. He looked at his heart. He realized there was a depth within him. He needed the mercy of God. He cast himself upon that mercy. And Jesus says he went down again to his house in right relationship with God. His sin was gone, praise God. His guilt was gone. His burden had been taken away. And he goes back to his house in right relationship with God because he came into God's presence. He recognized his need and he simply cast himself upon God's mercy. And Jesus gives us God's pronouncement upon the attitudes of these two men in that last verse that we read together. Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. You know, the the self-exalted, Jesus says there, will be abased. In 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 James' epistle, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, God resists the proud. Let me ask you tonight, dear one, do you need to be saved? Let me ask you a further question tonight. Do you think you need to be saved? Because God's word says you do need to be saved. And if you think you need to be saved, or if you don't think you need to be saved tonight, it means that there's pride in your heart. You know better than God. And all of the time, God's doing everything that he can possibly do that your soul could be set free from sin so that your sin could be forgiven. And God's doing everything in his power. Jesus Christ came into this world. He died upon the cross. Listen to me. On the cross he cried, It is finished! Do you know what he was saying? He was saying, as far as God is concerned, God has done everything that he can possibly do in order that man can be saved. It's a declaration. 
that God has done everything that he can possibly do in reaching out to you and me with his mercy. And his word says we need to be saved. And if you're in this service tonight and you have never thought that you had need of salvation, then dear one, listen to me. You're filled with pride and God resists the proud. He resists the proud. The self-exalted will be abased. But Jesus says the self-abased will be exalted. Again in the book of James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And so I'm asking you tonight, which category do you fall into here? Let me ask you first of all tonight, have you ever prayed? And I think probably everybody in life at some time or another prays. You know, sometimes a situation arises even if you're not a Christian, sometimes a situation arises and you have nowhere else to turn. You know, have you ever made a promise to God? Hey, many a time whenever we were younger and we get into trouble, we sort of said, Lord, get us out of this one and we'll do such and such a thing for a year. We'll do such and such another thing. Friends, everybody prays. But here's where it starts at. We have to cast ourselves upon the mercy of God, recognize our need, and cast ourselves completely upon him. Whenever we do that, praise God, that's what Jesus says in this last verse. He that humbles himself shall be exalted. Two men, they come to pray. One thinks he's better than the other. The other in his heart, as far as he's concerned, he just needs the mercy of God. They leave that place they make their way again from the place of prayer. And the man who casts himself upon the mercy of God goes away made right with God, right standing with God. I've written down here, the, the, the publican went home justified. The Pharisee just went home. One went home changed. The other went home just as he came. And my final question tonight is, dear one, listen to me. How will you go home? How will you go home? Would you cast yourself upon Christ tonight? Or tell me, will you leave this place with the attitude of the Pharisee? Oh, that's all right for them. But it's not for me. They need it. But I'm not so bad. Is that your attitude? Is that how you will leave here tonight? Or tell me, as I ask it again, how will you Go home. We're asking you tonight, very simply, just cast your all upon Jesus. Praise God, he died upon that cross because he loves you. He loves every one of us. And tonight he's waiting with arms outstretched and he says quite simply, come, come unto me. He says, I will give you rest. Let's just bow in prayer. Now, I'm asking you tonight, just in his presence, to be real. Be honest with yourself. Be real before God. Have you ever sinned? Because we all have. Then, dear one, you need to be saved. You need to ask God for his mercy. And that mercy is found at Calvary. Through the finished work of the cross. And I'm asking you now in your heart just to lift your heart before the Lord. And just pray just as this man prayed. God, be merciful to me. Because I'm a sinner. And I tell you tonight, if you will reach out to him like that from your heart. If you really mean that then Jesus will come. He'll touch your life. He'll save your soul. He'll make you over in you. But it's up to you. It is finished. He has done everything he can do. He's asking you now to accept. He's asking you now to respond. 
And he's asking you now to cast your all upon the mercy that's available through his finished work at the cross of Calvary. Will you pray that tonight? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Lord, you know every single heart that's bowed in this place this evening. Lord, you know where every single one of us stand in relation to you. Lord, for so many in this place tonight, we rejoice at that cross. We rejoice, Lord, that you didn't pass us by. We rejoice, Lord, that our sins, you took them, you nailed them to your cross. And for so many tonight, Lord, we'd say, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful and great salvation. But Lord, should there be any in this gathering this evening who have never come to Christ, who have never cast their all upon you, pleading for your mercy, asking your forgiveness, We pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, something that we have thought about, something that has been said, something that has been sung in this place tonight will strike deep into that heart or those hearts. And Father, we're asking you tonight in the precious name of Jesus, as you brood in the midst of this gathering now, we pray that you will draw souls, precious souls, unto yourself. Oh God, we commit each person to you. We commit your word to you. And we ask, Lord, grant deciding grace in hearts and lives tonight. And save, we humbly ask, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.